Let's see who's going to be first. Setting up. Want to try to angle so we can see the floor also without having to move too much. See how that works. Paul Logan, fix you. Yes. Oh, and it's how. Yes. Nice. You know what? Um, Get a broom as well. The towel will work. Hi, Tommy. Hello, Chris. Hi, Seb. Brian, Aramis, Mark. Um, get a, if you guys can, get a broom as well. We're going to use that towards the end. You guys are going to learn how to sweep. Just kidding. Happy Sunday. Okay. Take your single ball and let's start with the feet. Is that one going? Yes. Okay. Okay. This is my broom. This is my room. That one on. Okay. Good morning. Batman, is that you? Hi, Batman. We're starting with our feet. I like to, I like to start with the feet and the fingers, you know, the two extremities. Why not? And then I always kind of mix other things up depending on what it feels like the body needs. So you guys have a lot of different recovery things, a lot of different techniques. I'm sure you guys also know many more, but on any given day, of course it's not possible to do everything. So pick what it seems like your body needs the most, and then you'll have your favorites, you know, that you'll do regularly. Ooh, I gotta get my flexibility. Points, switch feet. Okay. So you're pressing down, gripping with your toes. And press down as you're rolling along. For me, I always feel it the most on my instep. It's always like super. I shouldn't say super sore. That's just where I feel it the most. But I don't like to feel my feet in, you know, day-to-day -day life hurting, so I guess that's good. Huh? And uh, shoes, yeah. You know, um, I was thinking about when uh, when we were when we were younger. My grandmother was alive. She'd always be like, "Take those shoes off! Take those shoes off!" And you know, like you think, you know. <gasps> You think your grandma is like, I'm like, yeah, what is she talking about? And then as I learned about, grab two fingers at a time, as I learned about the body and the musculoskeletal system and how everything's connected, it's like shoes are so crippling, like, like they take away our connection to the ground. And our feet were shaped like this. They're shaped like this for a reason. The big toe is shaped like that for a reason. Keep moving just roughly every 10, 15 seconds. Grab two more fingers, pull them back, make sure your wrist is relaxed so you're not resisting it. But uh, yeah, that connection with the ground, I mean, everything begins, you know, just like in fighting, with the connection with the ground, with the feet. So when we have shoes on and ladies on here, when you wear high heels, ooh, that's even worse. I say the long time on those two foot heels. <laughs> um, yeah, high heels are horrible. For what they, what they, yeah, the alignment, how much it messes everything up, like turns off the glute, which most people don't need more help turning off the glutes there. We already have an issue with them, with the amount of time that we tend to spend sitting now as compared to our ancestors that were constantly moving. So yeah, heels are, whew. Not good. But shoes in general, especially depending on the type of tennis shoe. There are some, you know, obviously that are flat and don't have big soles. The kind I like to wear, um, Adidas tend to have like a thick sole. So I do a lot of stuff um, strength training wise without shoes. And I would encourage you to consider doing the same. And especially if it's going to be a leg heavy day, I try to make sure I never forget to roll my feet. Sometimes I do, and uh, 
and just stop and go yeah, go roll and you'll be like let's do wrist rotations and you'll be like oh i feel connected to the ground again it's very cool other way we're going to do some stuff seated today which is why i have the stool because i want you guys to have a plethora, Ozzy's favorite word, a plethora of options. And so, for example, if, you know, those of you that are still working and potentially going into an office, things that you could do at your desk when you're seated. So, back up there. We're going to start a little bit closer. Let's do our four, seven, eight breathing first. Then we're going to go through a series of seated things. So if you remember the four, seven, eight breathing, it's inhaling for four counts, holding it, trying to fill your belly up with the inhale, holding it for seven counts, and then exhaling, trying to hollow out the belly for eight counts. So obviously I won't be able to talk during this one, so I'll count on my fingers. I'll try to remember the count accurately. <laughs> Sometimes I hold one for too long. So. Inhaling for four seconds, we'll do this, we'll do this seating. Um, if you guys, sorry, I didn't tell you, if you guys have a chair, a couch, or something like that, um, grab that quickly. So we're going to do four rounds of this. Four rounds, if you guys can, if we can turn this into a habit, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna freely admit, I have forgotten quite a few times this week. Um, but if we can turn this into a habit, morning and evening, really helps reset your parasympathetic nervous system and it has a whole host of cool benefits that you can google i will talk you off about that so let's begin i will have one hand counting ready Okay, and that's how fast it is. So twice a day, four, seven, eight breathing. Let's start in our chair, holding. This can also be done lying on the ground. Hold between, uh, behind your knee so that your ankles are nice and relaxed. And let's do ankle circles. You might feel I have a little bit of little, little baby pops in there. And that's, that's totally fine if anything's hurting, you know. I want to check out and see why, but little little pops. I pretty much have it every every circle. Switch directions. Usually, even if I am laying on the ground doing this, I still will hold behind the knee. Um, that's how I was taught to physical therapist, so that you don't have any tension and the joint can move freely. So keeping, keeping all your joints, obviously, mobile, as we've talked about many times before, super important to keep range of motion, mobility, you'll get stronger, you'll get more flexible. It's all putting it together. Let's switch legs. Pick any direction to start with. Try to go as full range as you can. You might notice differences between sides, where one side has more range, one side has less range. That's totally fine and normal. My right ankle is the one that tends to be, um, I have little issues with one of the, there's two main joints in the ankle, and the subtalar joint, switch direction, is one that I have to release frequently with a, with a little method that my physical therapist taught me to. And sometimes I get this really loud crack slash adjustment. It's very satisfying. 
this morning when I did it, I did not get that. So sometimes I'm guessing it doesn't need to be. Okay, let's do figure four stretch. So take one ankle over one knee. We've done this on the ground before too, and I'm sure you guys have done this on the ground many times. This stool is a little high for me, so my foot can't be flat on the ground. Unless I come here, I'll come to the edge of it. There we go. Um, gently press down on the knee, and you should feel a stretch in sort of the side of your hip. And also, let's think about our posture while we're here. So when I'm doing this, I'm going to come sideways to you for a second. Trying to be conscious of what my posture is doing, so I'm not lazily stretching like this, where I'm hunched over. Unless I specifically wanted to flex my upper back, but, and flexion meaning here, but otherwise, Try to drill in that good posture because, like we've talked about a lot before, we spend enough time in our fighting stance in posture that we don't want to be in in the rest of daily life. So let's drill in our good posture when we're not fighting. Let's switch legs and we'll reserve our fighting, fighting stance posture for only when we're fighting. Um, how are you guys doing? Send me, send me stuff in the comments because I do, I go through all the comments on all the videos, um, later, but how are you guys doing? How was this week for you? What's, what's going on? Where are you guys at in your quarantine stuff in whatever country you're in or even city? Like it ranges, varies from city to city also. Let's now come into spinal rotation. So I usually will just put a hand on the outside of one knee. And if there's something to reach for behind you, even, even better. So I'm just going to grab the side of the stool. Take your head with you. Try to stay tall. So also here, I'm not here. Try, that, that's not going to stretch me out nearly as much if I'm well crunched in and hunched over. Stay tall like there's a string coming out the center of your head. And gently rotate from your back. Our upper back, our thoracic spine, should have a lot of mobility. Take some good breaths here. You're still looking over your shoulder. And now let's come to the other side. So thoracic spine is from the end of your ribs to just below your neck. That part of the spine should be one of our big movers. Where we have a lot of rotation. Low back, lumbar spine, surprisingly, does not. So if that is where you feel the rotation coming from, it's usually because something else is not as mobile as it should be, and that something else could be thoracic spine, or it could be pelvis. Hips should be very mobile too. Shoulders as well. It's foot and ankle complex as well. Those are the four big movers. That feels good. Okay, let's do some neck. And be gentle with this neck. I like to put one arm behind my back, not completely necessary. Gently first elongate yourself so that you're staying nice and tall. Again, I'm not crunching over here, I'm trying to stretch my neck. I'm, I'm lengthening myself first and then gently reaching. So I feel like my neck is reaching up and over versus crunching down. So maintaining that posture. This is always a little tight on me. Now just take your gaze to looking diagonally at the ground. Just hit some muscles in a little bit of a different way. So yeah, I'm just curious where, where you guys are in your quarantine and how you guys are doing with everything. I've already gotten to talk to my mom last night. She's like, I'm getting cabin fever. But she doesn't, you know, do much else, unfortunately, like, like being able to, you know, come out to 
a gym and do this. Um, I'm super grateful I get the chance to do this. So um, she's done some of the classes, which is really cool. I mean, it's obviously uh, very new to her, so she's so there are moves that she doesn't know to switch your gaze to diagonal. But I thought that was super cute. <laughs> and she had a birthday during all this. So many people with a birthday, this graduation. Ugh. I was talking to someone and uh, we were like, and now gently put your hand in the back of your head where you would put for a, a nice clinch and gently flex your neck down. So I was talking to someone yesterday about the last, the last time I was in Mammoth, and I was like, yeah, you know, there were three of us on a trip, and we were like, okay, well, you know, they have to they have to close. This was before they announced for the season. They just have to close, you know, we'll be, well, like we truly in our hearts thought that we would be back in two weeks. Like, we probably, we probably won't open up as soon as next week, but in two weeks, it should be fine. Yeah. And then... On the drive home from there was when I got the email as an employee that they were close to the season. We come facing sideways again. So we can do a seated cat and cow. We've done this on the ground where we want to put our our spine into nice flexion and a nice extension. So we can do this seated. So this is something you can, all of these obviously seated things you can do at your desk. So you can put your hands wherever you want them. I'm going to put mine here. And just try to hollow out. And now we are purposely trying to round our back as much as possible. So this would be our, here on the ground, our scary cat. This is our cat position. Just trying to round as much as possible. Even trying to feel it down into the low back as well. And then our extension, where now we're trying to make our back like a C. And this is our cow. And your head can fall back with you. We basically just want, we want our vertebrae eventually to feel like they're moving one at a time. I'm going to sneeze in a second. I think cow, the allergies this season, okay. Have been way worse. Not horrible, but usually it's like very minor for two weeks in April and uh, still going a little bit. Okay, so that's a seated cat cow. Do this. And these things, um, the post I did about um, meat, the non exercise. Activity thermogenesis. Um, these little things at your desk. Let's grab one hand behind our back. So we're gonna we're gonna be pulling on that arm. Rotate and then rotate out of it and add the pull. I forgot I want to do this one after cat cow. Just start feeling a little bit on the front of your shoulder as well. Now bring the arm with you. Rotate into it. Rotate out of it and pull. I'm gonna come facing this way too. Um, what was I saying? Rotate into it. <laughs> or rotate into it. Rotate out of it. I completely forgot what I was saying. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a skill, by the way. Okay, let's switch. <laughs> switch side. Oh man. Rotate into it. Oh, okay. And I'm backwards today, clearly. Clearly. <laughs> I hope you guys are getting a kick out of this too. Rotate into it. Rotate out of it. It's been a long week. Right? There's, there's my excuse. Uh, okay. And a lot, and this can be done standing as well. So these leaves, oh, that's where I was. That's where I was. These little things um, can help increase your metabolism. 
and it's been proven. Let's just stand and do an overhead reach. Hands, my hands are a little bit out of the frame. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of grabbing underneath one hand with the other hand. Your hands can do kind of whatever you want, but feel like you are, I want my, I personally want my feet to be in line, so I just wanted to make sure that I was standing with them in line. Let's just reach overhead. And again, you can stagger feet, you can do all kinds of different things, but if I'm meaning to have my feet in line, then I just like to check in on myself because sometimes still, I'll think my feet are pointed straight and I'll look down and my right foot is pointing to the side, which was one of my big things with when my posture was all jacked up and when my walk was jacked up, let's come a little bit to one side, let's lean to one side, but we're staying long when we're leaning. So I'm not collapsing over as I'm leaning, I'm taking that length and then coming up and over and also think about keeping your chest open. So I'm also not here, again, unless I want to be there. I'm not saying it's wrong to be there, but if I'm, if I'm meaning to do one thing with my body and inadvertently doing something else, I wanna know about it and either correct it or figure out why my body is doing that because the body will always take the path of least resistance It'll do what's easiest for it. So if it's doing something that I don't intend it to do, then I need to figure out what's going on. Is something tight? Is something hurt? Um, all of that. Is something out of alignment? All of that. So feel this big stretch. You should feel a whole kind of fascial line stretch coming down there. And then just standing up. If, if you did even a faster version of this, or a part of these things at your desk multiple times a day, that would be amazing, not only for how your body's going to feel at the end of the day, but also for increasing your metabolism. There have been studies. Um, get, your, get your two balls, either whether you have your duct tape ones. That's so funny that Bozzy was calling them purple because He's like, no, but they're purple balls. I'm like, no, it's just because my duct tape was purple at the time I made these years ago. It's actually just tennis balls. <laughs> let's start on, let's go down our back, starting at the back of the center of our head, coming down. We're going to end up down here. It doesn't feel great on everyone's body to come all the way down here um, into the lumbar region, but if it does feel good for you, then totally Totally good with it. We're also gonna get, we're gonna hit our legs and stuff with this. Am I visible on the ground? I think I am. Let me just turn this one down a little bit. Um, hi, Benjamin. Where's Bozzy? I know. Daryl, every Sunday, Bozzy is not here. This is the recovery day. He's back tomorrow. And, oh, that's another question I wanted to ask you guys. So we're gonna start. Here, we're gonna say no, we're gonna say yes, if we're gonna come all the way down like that. Um, tell me your guys' thoughts on the new schedule. We're cutting back of the schedule a little bit. Boz is really busy this week, and so he needed to, you can hold them here while you're starting. Sometimes they do slip. So, and try to have your elbows out to the side. Try to keep that chest opened up. Go through the end range of saying no. Nice and slow. So what do you guys think of the Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, Sunday? May I think he was saying, and then move down a notch. I think he was saying that maybe the following week, um, Friday, depending on feedback from you guys. So you guys give me some feedback on that. And even, even if you're not sure until next week, um, you know, give me feedback, give me some comments so I can pass that along to him. Of course, there's a ton. Move down again. 
Of course, there's a ton of workouts that you guys can go back to and replay over and over, but let me know your honest thoughts on that. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I would like to, I would like to see you guys like three times a week. Um, <laughs> see you guys. I consider it seeing you guys. You guys are the extended gym family. Um, normally he only teaches class twice a week. So him being in here five days was like really, really freaking cool. But I think scheduling wise things are getting, you know, a little bit busy and that's, that's part of the reason, or that's the main reason actually. Okay. Now we should kind of be at the top of our thoracic spine. And you can add in some side to side movement here. Very much should feel like a little self massage. And move down. You could also do like, we're not doing a sit up here. We're just massaging the muscle in a different way. You can also move arms around and You'll just, you'll just feel the effect on the muscles and nothing should hurt per se. If there's an extra tight spot, yeah, you'll feel that more. But if anything hurts in a bad way, then don't stay on that area. Never force anything that, you know, you, you know, bad pain versus ouch, that's a tight muscle that needs to be released pain. Or just, let's call that one discomfort. Come down a little bit. I'm just going to move a little bit more back down here. Kind of at mid-back now. And I feel like I'm doing like a mini snow angel. Can't tell I think about snowboarding very much, can you? <laughs> totally. Totally should still be going. Oh, that was a nice little adjustment. Chiropractors, I, I believe, do not like the word crack. But it's just so, you know, convenient and so accurate. It is cracking, right? You could do a little backstroke here, too. Getting towards the low back. So again, sometimes it doesn't feel good for people to go to go past the ribs or to go near that near that last rib. So do what feels good for your body. I'm just going to kind of quickly go down the lumbar area. And okay, we're going to come to our side. Now they're going to be right kind of kind of beneath and behind. The armpit. This is part of one of our rotator cuff muscles and this one can get really tight. It gets really tight on me. It gets really tight on a fair amount of people. You can rotate your body forward and back. You can roll up and down and you can also, okay, there's the spot. You can also move your arm a little bit. Oh, I can't move that far in this spot. Okay, so, so two things I'm curious about with you guys. How are you guys doing during the quarantine? How are you feeling? Um, and, oh, that spot hurts. And potential thoughts on the new schedule, and I realize you may not know until next week. Um, so we were just talking a little bit over here. Someone asked yesterday, I did respond to this, um, when is our gym going to open? We have no idea. Let's stay on one, you know, let's stay on one side and go down the areas on one side. Now find, so you have, you can feel your pelvis bone right here, you know, the, the area that we never want to kick when we're doing the body kick. Go right below that. There's a little area of, of soft tissue and then there's another bone below that. So this small area between your pelvic bone and what's technically top of the femur. Let's go there on the side. 
and let's move our body forward and back, trying to loosen that area up a little bit. Um, we have no idea when the gym's going to open. We are in Ventura County where we are in phase two of things opening, which I don't even remember what all was included. All I remember are florists for some reason. I don't know why I remember that one. Uh, I think like car washes, um, things like that. It's still like curbside delivery for most things. Now come up, bypass the next little bony area, and let's come down to the side of our leg and get that tensor fasciolata, and actually we're just on there, uh, get the IT band. This one, stay up a little bit more so we can kind of roll down. Um, gyms are in phase three in our county, and there's like no, no time frame on when phase three can open. Some of us are speculating that, you know, that it's going to be, you know, obvious, kind of obviously, <laughs> depending on how phase two goes, um, maybe numbers of case. I, I, I honestly have no idea. Okay. Let's come to the other side and then we'll do a part of the legs. Let's come on that Terry's minor area below and sort of behind the armpit. You may notice, just like with everything else, you may notice differences between sides. One side might be tighter, might have more discomfort than the other side. All those things are totally normal. Same thing with exercising. One side might be stronger. One side might be harder to balance on. That one happens a lot. Like say with lunges or something. One side, one direction just feels way better than the other. So, all right, let's move on from this one to that TFL. So below, below your main hip bone, kind of right below that small little area. Yeah, so we don't, we don't know what to say we still want and I, I very much want and I know Boz does too a way to stream you know whenever we do open a way to stream his classes to you guys that's that's actually another question um, now that I think about it uh, okay let's come down the IT band so let's just move down a little bit stay up a little bit higher so the down leg is straight, I didn't talk about the details, I just figured you could see me. The down leg is straight and the other leg is bent behind so you can push yourself nice and slow. This, um, most of these things uh, can be done with a foam roller as well. Um, the foam roller, because it's you know so much bigger, sometimes um, like the two balls down the back, it gets in there. I, I use the foam roller to go down my back a lot too, but um, these are a little more, a little more concentrated. So that, so that other question for you guys was, if we could stream, you know, whenever we do reopen, if we could figure out a way to stream Boz's classes, because like, like on my end, when I'm trying to think of for you guys, um, let's come down to quads, is where we can mount something, which you know, obviously, you know, it's easy for for someone for someone that does this. Um, but where we could mount something where like you guys would need a good visual of the whole class, you know, because it's not like he stands in one spot and for someone to follow him around, you know, that, that probably wouldn't work, but you know, some sort of camera guy to follow him around probably wouldn't work. You can flex and extend the knee while you're holding on a spot. Also just kind of angle, get, you know, angle your body so that you're getting, so that you're not going just down the same spot on the quad, like, angle to the side and come a little more on the outside. Um, so like mounting something where you guys can kind of see the whole class. So you can see as he walks around, helps people, you guys would be, you know, seeing the people in class. And then um, we'd have to make sure, you know, it's okay with the people taking class, you know, that they're, you know, they're being streamed. I, I think our members would all be okay with that. Um, and would you guys be willing to, to make it fair for all of our members pay 
some sort of monthly membership fee to the gym for that. So that's that's a question. I know I know we've Boz and I switch likes. Boz and I have mentioned that before, but um, figured while well, I was talking to you guys about stuff anyway, might as well ask that question too. And I have no idea details um, as far as cost or whatever, but I'm thinking somewhere around um, maybe like. $12,000 a month, something like that. Just kidding. Um, no, something, it would be, it would be nominal. Our, our, for a gym member here, if they have a full membership, because there are some memberships, let's go back to where you were sitting. Um, I believe the full membership is 200 a month to, to some, something like that. But, um, Clearly, way less than that because we don't need to be streaming um, his two classes. So, so something not expensive. Let's get into our hamstrings. With the hamstrings, we want the knee bent. It's a little too intense if the leg is straight for the hamstrings. So, so there's that question too. And when. When we get word on when the gym can open, then I think we would, um, you know, definitely talk more about the details of that. But I still, I want, I want it to happen very badly because I feel like, you know, I feel like we have an, an online extended gym family now. And I would, I, I would hate, <laughs> that, would make, that would make me really sad. That would make me really sad to not be able to see and interact with you guys anymore. This right hamstring is my little, my little problem child. Okay, come to switch legs. Little problem child is... Mommy, child, mommy, hi! There's your, there's your bozzy. <laughs> I heard the word child, so... Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Hopefully that guy was, was still watching. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. That was funny though. Was he in his singing? Okay. Ooh, that's oh wow, that hurts. Lefty, I thought you weren't. I thought you weren't the problem child. Okay. Let's do calves on the ground quickly. And we're gonna do our kneeling hip flexor flow. Okay, calves, if you want it more intense, you can cross one calf over. This is a little more ideal if, um, if, they, if you are on a little bit of a block or some sort of elevation. Just make sure that you're not tensing your ankle. Make sure that that ankle is nice and relaxed. You want that, you want that sucker really relaxed. And same thing, get on the inside of the calf, get on the outside of the calf, hit, hit different angles so that when you're rolling, you're not just only rolling the muscles in one way, you could also roll side to side. So you're hitting, hitting things at different angles. Get more towards the outside now. Oh. I wish the comments would like pop up really big. That would be cool. So then I can be like, uh, read it from here. Say an answer. Switch sides. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go check some out in a second. Would be cool if now now I'm like thinking about how we would like the view to stream it in because it, it's a bigger room his classes are held and when we took you guys on the tour we call it the red room um, that's our bigger room here now I'm all like okay how, how could we do that where because same thing like that would be cool if, if the comments could be 
a little bit bigger, and it could be like, oh, Boz, there's a question from the UK. There's a question from Germany. There's a question from Spain. There's a que- no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that like that would be cool if there was if there were a way to do that. Okay, our half kneeling hip flexor flow. My hair off of me, so that's gonna get on my nerves. Okay, we're gonna start with our half kneeling hip flexor, with our traditional half kneeling hip flexor stretch. And when you're in this half kneeling position, remember that if you really want to get the hip flexors which are here, tuck that pelvis under and squeeze the same side glute. That will get into these hip flexors much more than if your pelvis were here, which is where my pelvis would still love to live to this day, and I have to remind it. But now we're we're tucking it purposely even more, squeezing that glute, sending the same side arm overhead so we get this whole fascial line stretch. Going on, reach up towards the ceiling. Hold that there, I'm just gonna move these guys a little out of the way. Big stretch there. I like to add a little bit of lateral motion Reach across, now now you should feel the stretch going down into the low back. Should feel good. This arm can be doing whatever. Hanging out, if you want to rest it here. Try not to brace it here, where you're like, if you want to rest it, that's fine. Otherwise, keep it down. Now, bring the arm inside the knee. and Let's open up to rotation. I keep changing so that I can be the better angle for you guys to see. So I'm trying to get this shoulder back as far as I can. And that movement again should be coming from the thoracic spine, the upper part where the ribs are basically. Okay, now grab the foot. And now we are getting more into the quad as well as the hip flexor. So grab that foot. Sometimes I lose my balance. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's going, it's going. So now you should feel more of the quad stretches. Well, there we go. I'm telling you, it's been a little bit of a long week. But not, I wasn't, I wasn't joking about that. Ugh. <laughs> oh. And then try to keep the shoulder back as well so it stays open. I have to look at one spot on the ground so I don't uh, lose my balance. <laughs> one, one of those, one of those mornings. Okay, now let's come up into the hamstring. Stretch. Let's just sit back. Let's keep the knee on the ground. Actually, let's make it nice and passive, but not so holding ourselves up. Now, with the hamstring stretch, we can use our pelvis position to intensify that stretch. So I can sit back here, and I can can feel a hamstring stretch. It's not super intense. But now if I purposely take my pelvis and anteriorly tilt it, tilt it back, now I can feel more in my hamstring. So we can use those pelvic positions so... Here is more neutral. I don't quite feel as much hamstring as when I take here. So know that those adjustments are are obviously things should move for a reason. So it's not that we 100% stay in neutral pelvis. We want to be there when we're standing with our good posture, but it should be able to move. Okay, come back up. Now there is like one of my hairs that keeps sticking to my face and I can't get it. (laughs) Now bring this knee off the ground, this hand on the ground. I'm gonna drop my hips towards you guys, coming on the side of that foot. And 
hugging my knee. I'm going to come facing you guys now. Okay, so again, the way we got into that, hand down, lift the knee up, drop my hips, come on the side of my foot, and grab my knee. And put my hand out a little bit more. You should feel a big stretch in the side of the back. It's getting a muscle called the QL, quadratus lumborum, is part of what we're getting here. Um, we're getting the glute of this leg. Just drop down. Oh man, the side of the back feels really good. Okay, come back up. And now, which way do I want to turn? I'm going to end up here, so let me turn. <laughs> Sorry if it's confusing with the turning. Now we're getting adductor ankle. If this foot, if when you're here, the, the heel cannot go down to the ground, then come up a little bit more so you can feel the full stretch in this adductor, but also so we can start working on ankle mobility so that we can get a good degree of what's called dorsiflexion on the ankle. This foot can be either um, toes pointed up or you can turn over that may not feel good on everyone's knee. So toes pointed up probably feels the best. And again, you can still, you can purposely play with the height of where you want your body here. And then we're gonna do the flow in the reverse direction. We'll push over to the other side. This, this is my more compromised ankle that likes to be super tight. So, Let's see, let's see if it wants to be on the ground today. It doesn't quite want to go to the ground today, so I'm gonna come up here. So when I tried to release the joint earlier, it didn't go. It also wants to turn out. <laughs> yes, yes, it's so interesting what the body still wants to do, even after over a decade of physical therapy and correcting most things still isn't perfect. Okay, and now I'm coming facing here. Ugh. Let's get that hamstring stretch and remember you can anteriorly rotate your pelvis, then you'll get that hamstring stretch more and that that heel does not want to come to the ground. So it just gets to hang up there. It just gets to hang out. Haven't mentioned in a bit that deep breathing is important with stretching as well. And now let's come up. Let's do the quad stretch first. Grab that foot. Feel more of the quad. It is getting some of the hip flexor, but this one you should feel a little bit more of the quad. Interesting. I'm more, I'm more stable in this stance, probably because it's my orthodox stance, versus when I was the other way with, with the quad, with the, with the foot off the ground, I was less stable, probably because that was my southpaw stance. I always wonder if you guys can see a difference in my technique and punching when I'm in southpaw. Now we're tucking, getting the hip flexors when I'm in southpaw versus when I'm in orthodox. Because I can totally feel a difference. I'll come face you guys. I can completely feel a difference. Like I feel, I feel slower. I feel um, less balanced. And um, I, don't, I, I, one time I asked Boz, I was like, am I rotating enough? I feel like I don't rotate as much. I don't know if I drop my hand. I hope I don't drop my hands. I don't, I don't think I do that, but I just, like I can totally feel a difference when I go into southpaw. Let's open up to the side, come here. It, yeah, it's just like, it's obvious that I spent many years not going in the southpaw, which 
someone, if someone is starting this new, I would recommend switching stances right off the bat. Ooh, I just got a back crack adjustment. Oh, let's come over to the side. That was a nice crack. Love it when things adjust. Like how I go back and forth between the words. <laughs> Reach tall, squeezing that glute, tucking the hips. Okay, cool. So that's our half kneeling hip flexor flow. Okay, let's come into runner's pose and then I want to do some 90 90. We are at 50 50. No, let's do the 90 90 first because the runner's pose is a little bit similar to that. So let's do our 90 90 hip, hip stretch, not flexor, just hips. Um, so come here. I want to come. Check out a couple comments. Come here, lean your torso over your front leg. Hold that. Hold there, just breathe into that. I probably, every stretch is awesome with the hip flexors. Yes, thanks Vicky, they are good. Stretching things, start hurting. <laughs> Making popping sounds, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, Tony, your stretching sucks, it's all right. You could. I believe you can become a master stretcher, Tony. <laughs> Alex, yes, I hear you. Always find a way to tweak your punches. Oh, that's that's good, Brian. Yeah. Always, always finding a way. Okay, now let's lean our torso over. The rear leg won't be able to go nearly as far. This gets a little more into that rear leg hip capsule. Can feel a lot underneath, kind of like the kind of like the underneath inner thigh. Hold that one. I'm gonna come back to the front for a little bit since I didn't do that one that much, and then we'll transition with that bear sit. And keeping your back flat is important too. Okay, when we transition into that bear sit, I'm gonna kind of come here. What we wanted, we're thinking about coming up on the toes of our feet. Try to, try to have your hands off the ground. On the toes of your feet, open up. Ooh, my right foot almost wanted to cramp. Open up and we're just getting like inner, inner hip stretch. And then come back over, transition fully to the other side. And now we're, so it's 90-90 because both legs should be like at 90 degrees. Figured you guys already knew that, but. And lean forward. Oh, I could go further on this side. Further, easier, I should say, where you know where it doesn't feel like the other side. It feels like I would have been you know, forcing it. Still keeping your back flat though, so your chest is open. So flat meaning meaning not here, unless I specifically wanted to stretch that part of my upper back too. Otherwise, I want the back nice and flat, and the chest is open when back is flat. So remember last week, okay, and now lean over the, last week how I had the thing with um, the freeway was closed at the exit I usually take for the gym. So I got on the freeway and then of course we all came to a stop and I was stuck at that point so I was super late. So I, I set myself a reminder for this morning to check traffic, <laughs> which I haven't, I mean, I don't, know, I, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever done that to check traffic to, to get to the gym because I'm two freeway exits away or I could take side streets. I just usually hop on the freeway because you know, it's a little bit faster. So this morning I was like, we checked traffic because I was, I felt so bad about being late. And then someone, Vicky was like, did you go back and watch the beginning 
uh, where Boz was starting, and I'm like, no, I was like, no, I didn't watch it. And so I went back and watched a little bit of it, and it was actually pretty funny. Okay, transition into that bear stand, come up on each toes, opening up those hips. So technically when we're doing this, our legs are kind of offset, and I think that's why um, it's called a bear sit. Like this, this leg, how do I describe it? I suppose if my hips weren't as tight, this knee would be open too, but it's, it's kind of like one leg is a little bit lower than the other. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't, I, I, I get it. But yeah, and then I also had traffic. Um, let's do, let's do a little bit of shoulders, and then I want to do the shoulder flossing. A little bit of traffic on, um, what day was it? it? Must have been Thursday. Yeah, after Boz and I did that, um, let's just do shoulder rolls. After we did that Karate Unity um, interview, Chris is totally awesome, dude. We both, he had to go somewhere and I had to go somewhere. And um, there was a big accident on the freeway. Hope the people are okay. Shoulder rolls forward. And yeah, I was, I was late to my place. I had to go to because three lanes were cut off, were blocked off. So it's so weird. Like you get out of traffic. I don't know if where everyone lives, they have to deal with traffic, but we don't, I don't deal with it too, too much. Not like in Los Angeles. Like, oh man, when I lived in Los Angeles, traffic was not, not cool. Let's do one more thing with the shoulders before we do that. Am I out of frame? Let me pull, pull this one up. But, um, okay. But yeah, you get, got, uh, let's stretch posterior shoulder, keeping my shoulder away from my ear. Let's grab the triceps and just gently pull it so that we're stretching the back of that shoulder. So got a little, got a little spoiled in the past two months, not dealing with any, many other cars on the road. I would say, in my opinion, that's the only, <laughs> one of the only good things. There, there, are, there are other good things, actually. I've got to learn some skills, switch side, some skills that before I was having trouble fitting into my busy life. So I'm actually super grateful for that and still on that learning journey. Okay, now I want to see and let me know, you guys, in the comments afterwards, what the range of motion with the shoulders is. And this is something that you guys can take your take your broom. And this is something that's so so fast, really good to do either before the workout, um, and or after, or just throughout the day. So make sure your hands are placed far enough apart on the broom. Like I couldn't do it if my hands were here, it, it totally stopped. So place your hands wide enough on the broom and having your good posture. So having your pelvis right underneath you, chest stays open. Try to pass this behind you slowly, seeing if you can come all the way around and back in front of you. And then here's one thing that I had to learn back in physical therapy. Try to keep your shoulders down away from your ears. Remember, we're not in fighting stance right now. So trying to keep those guys down. I'll show you how it looks the way I used to do it when I was first in physical therapy is the way my body used to accomplish this was here. So that is not what we want to be doing. And to this day, before I do this, I consciously am like, okay, keep shoulders, stay down, shoulders, stay down. And that is better range of motion, nice shoulder mobility without these compensations in the upper traps coming up to try to help with that motion. So this would be a nice, a nice good movement for you guys to do a few times a day and always take it nice and slow. Like don't, don't try to race with this cause you know, it's just not necessary, right? So that is what I have for you guys today. 
if you feel you need any more than that, as you know, we have a big library of stuff. I think, I don't think we did this the first Sunday, but we should probably have like six or seven of these. Um, so yes, I try to learn every day too. There's so much to learn. So I hope you guys have a fantastic Sunday. Thank you for joining in. I'm going to go back and look through the answers to your questions. And I think I saw someone writing about this. You're welcome, Stephen. Um, that uh, the comments are harder to see in the, um, dude, YouTube. <laughs> dude, seriously? Come on, get the words. <laughs> You're welcome, Gavin. Have a great day, Brian. You're welcome, Paul. Um, yes, Vicky, stretch band, stretch band totally works for that too. You can do this with a band or even with a towel as well. That's a, that's a good point. I forgot to mention. Um, let me know answers. But if you can, if there's something you really want, you know, you really want me to know, you really want me to pass on the boss. If you can put it in one of our Facebook pages, um, either like link to this video. In his live, I take it and I repost it to my page um, or commenting to it on my page too, then I will see it a little bit or a lot bit easier than YouTube. But for whatever reason, the YouTube, it's really hard to go back and look at those comments. I don't know why, because I want to talk to all of those people too. You are very welcome, Tommy Ganton. You're welcome, Wade. Have a great day. Bye, you guys.